The spectral stalkers are coming. Alrighty, it's Game Book Collector here. The year is 1991 and Peter Darvo Evans has just released Spectral Stalkers. So I'm just going to say from the start, I absolutely love this game book. I thought it was fantastic and what I really liked about it, apart from the story, uh, is the artwork. And this book is fantastic. Now the cover itself is by Ian Miller. Uh, and it's illustrated by Tony Hoff. So on the front cover of this game book, you have the Zagira World. You have various creatures in the front here. You have uh, the black shadows that are uh, reside in this world that are under um, kind of under the control of God Globulus. You have these creatures here called the Mantris, who are like shepherds that uh, look after these creatures here, which I think are called cool pods, or kind of insect type sheep things. Uh, what I like about this cover by Ian Miller. Uh, I think it's fantastic, it's very detailed, I do like this kind of thing, uh, it's, it's just an intricate detailed cover, uh, it's a bit different from your normal fighting fantasy covers. At the top here you have the Black Dragon uh, signage, um, it's game book number 45, Green Spine by Puffin. So the back of the book it says, uh, hunted across time and space, the Aleph is a prize beyond all measure, a mysterious globe from another dimension which can be used to harness all the forces of the universe and it has been entrusted to you for safekeeping. You must use its unearthly powers to transport you through the many spheres of the multiverse and return it to its rightful owner. But beware, the nightmarish spectral stalkers also want to live, and they're on your trail. So just looking at the book here, it's basically a rundown what's in the back page inside the front cover. Uh, and say there it has a list of game books, uh, up to game book 51. It says Spectral Stalkers by Peter Darvo Evans, illustrated by Tony Huff. And the next page says first published in 1991. Now the foundation of this game book is basically the same as all other fighting fantasy game books. There is however, uh, an inside covers here, a map, a maze map that you really need later on in the book for uh, to navigate through a section. So that's important. Your skill, stamina and luck in uh, the combat system is still the same. However, there's one other element here. And that's a trail trail score. Basically, when you engage with an enemy or have combat, your presence becomes alerted to the spectral stalkers, right? And you may be instructed to increase your trail score or roll three dice against your trail score. Now, if you roll three dice and it's equal or more in your trail score, then the spectral stalkers basically can't locate you. If it's um, less than your trail score, then obviously your trail score is too high and you are located and that has a negative impact on your gameplay. So that's the adventure sheet and the trail score there. There's a background information uh, before you turn to page one uh, about your mission and you start as normal. Section one, uh, you're walking along a road in cool in Titan and there's a, a, a bright flash in the sky and this creature appears, a wind creature appears and it gives you an alif and the alif as a, a small sphere, like a glass ball, uh, it's magical. It has the ability to transport, teleport, or well, basically it's teleportation, or it's a portal to other dimensions, to other worlds in the Marco universe. And basically you are now the owner of the Aleph, and the Spectral Stalkers are intent of finding you, and taking you to Archmaid Globus, this game book keeps you on your toes. It's well written again by Peter Davro Evans and the uh, illustrations throughout this book are absolutely fantastic by Tony Hoff. Um, they're amazing. Uh, highly intricate, highly detailed. Uh, there's one here. This one here. If you can check that out. That is fantastic. That's a fantastic piece of artwork. This creature busting from a, an ice tomb. Amazing. Uh, several ones. You've got the a sort of creature. Uh, I find quite an uh, interesting character. Was it Metron? Um, to find him. I don't have a map down there. Oh, there's one there. You've got a wear cat and uh, the magician. Here it's here. Metron and his kind of study. You've got charts on the wall. You've got glass files. You've got globes. 
it's highly intricate and detailed, that is fantastic. And there's another one here, I found a fantastic piece of artwork. It has a two-headed dog. It's a logic dog. Look at that there. Fantastic by Tony Hoff. I love his artwork. Um, it's kind of gothic looking as well, isn't it, some of it? So basically you don't know where it's going to end up and you have to jump from a dimension to dimension. So the nature of airlift during transportation is quite an interesting one. You roll a dice, and if the dice lands in an even number, you've got to go to a certain paragraph. If it lands in an odd number, you've got to go to another certain paragraph. So the fate of the game book can be in the hands of the dice itself. An odd or an even number dictates which section you go to, which is it's out your hands, basically. I did come across a potential error in the game book later on where I reached a section and was instructed to reduce my stamina score to two. Then laterally after that, another section instructed me to roll six dice against my stamina score. If the dice roll was higher or equal to my stamina score, then basically I was in deep trouble and I met my demise. I just didn't feel this was, was right at all. It looked like an error because your stamina score was two anyway and no way the dice roll was going to be less than that. However, I had to retrace my steps back to a section, remap again, and start from there. I never came across this section again, so yeah, it was a strange one. And also, while they know, I found throughout the book you obtained a lot of equipment you didn't actually need. For example, I had things like a Lucky Charm, I had an Ensign from a Tavern and Cool. I also had a Clay Ball with Life Force, I didn't actually use in the, in the, in the book. I found that quite strange, uh, having to obtain this equipment and I didn't really need it. So as you make your way across the cosmos, the multiverse, you eventually arrive at the residence, the domain of the Archmage Globus. And from there, you have certain paragraphs and certain choices to make. And I feel uh, it's a neat little twist, or is it a twist with Peter Davro Evans, where you, it's, it's to do with the wording. You, you have to read the wording very carefully. and uh, You have to choose from uh, certain uh, decisions how you're going to proceed. And you need to read it very carefully there because that's, it's like a wee twist in the words in a... Uh, it's well done by, I said, Peter Davro Evans. I love this book. I thought it was fantastic. That's Spectral Stalkers. I thought that work by Tony Hoff was fantastic. The storyline by Peter Davro Evans, great. Uh, keeps you guessing. It's not like your usual kind of fight fantasy game book. You know, they arrive at different worlds through the sailor, etc. The Spectral Stalkers are constantly uh, trying to locate you, catch up with you, and de destroy you in the Aleph, or take the Aleph away. Uh, yeah, really well done. And also, the artwork and outside of the game book, the exterior artwork by Ian Miller. Yeah, fantastic. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please, please subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. And that's it for this episode of Game Book Collector. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you again in the next episode. Take care.